Since it's February already, I thought it's time I did another ST video in the spirit of the holiday. Now, I was looking around the side cartridge website the other day, and they've got a lot of new and very interesting projects. And I got my eye on the side cartridge PSU for Atari ST, billed as a solderless PSU upgrade for your Atari ST, STE, or Mega ST. Now, I ordered one, and it arrived within two weeks. Here's the box. Let's give it a little open it, shall we? So I'm going to spin it around. And around again. And one more time. So can we get in now? Uh, no, so more unboxing required. Okay, here we go. What do we have? There's an invoice, not too exciting. A bit of foam. A little bit more foam. And a QR code to scan that opens the installation instructions. It's interesting, but you know, we don't need installation instructions. <clears throat> we have the power supply itself, I presume. A bag of random bits and pieces. And an adapter plate that's resisting coming out of the box. So that's all she wrote for the contents of the box. Let's have a better look at what was in it. Now, this is the adapter plate. Looking at the other side, it says this side faces down. Good advice. It shows where the power supply goes. That's the RPD60. And on this side, it, it says this side faces up. Excellent stuff. Foolproof. Question is, is it proof against a fool like me? Opening the package for the power supply, here it is. It's a sexy little beast. And the RPD60 is billed as a medical grade PSU. I'm not 100% sure what that means, but it must be better than an ordinary one. There's a header on the left here that goes to the main board of the ST, and a header here that takes in 240 volts from the mains, at least in the UK. But this PSU has an input range of 90 volts to 264 volts AC. So basically, I think you're covered no matter where you are in the world. This PSU has great undervolt, overvolt, and short circuit protection. Basically, it's just way better than the original. On the bottom here, we have high and low voltage sections and some good slots in the motherboard for isolation. Let's have a look at the contents of the parts pack. At the top there, we have the connector that joins the PSU low voltage output to the ST's mainboard. And on the other side, we have the connector that gets the 240 volt input into the device from the mains. There are some bolts, risers and washers. And this, which is a connector block. Now this is actually two separate parts plugged together and that will make assembling the kit a bit easier. But silly me, didn't realize that until much later in the process. Watch to the end and then you'll know what you should do rather than what I did. And by the way, on that subject, I am human like everybody else and I make mistakes. But I always leave my mistakes in so you see where things might go wrong. I could edit this to make it just look like I put it together and everything worked, but that's not what I do. Oh, and there's a mysterious screw in there that's not part of the kit. We'll see where that's from in a little bit. The first stage of assembly is to attach these hexagonal posts to this board. And the power supply will fit on top of those posts and the board will attach to the ST through these holes on the outside. So we'll start with the board kind of upside down and we'll need a bolt and a riser. The washers we'll use later. So putting the bolt through the back of the board, we put the riser onto the bolt and loosely tighten them. And I'll skip to the point where all four are in place. And I'm going to tighten these a little further, but I'm only going to tighten them kind of finger tight. And I'm holding the risers on the back of the board while I tighten them. There's no need for a spanner. Next, we take the PSU and put it on those risers. And we'll attach that to the adapter plate. Now, this fixing is the one that needs the washer. And I will say this is a little fiddly operation as the bolts aren't very long. And with the washers on there, there isn't much of a kind of a bolt to deal with. My shaky hands made a little more difficult than it should do. So here, by the magic of a jump cut, I'm tightening up the bolts. And again, pretty much just finger tight. Before we fit it, I thought I'd weigh the PSU and we'll compare it to the original when we take that out. 
And as you can see with the cables, it weighs in at 196 grams. Other units may exist. So here we have my Atari ST. This is the one we put the GoTech into a couple of episodes ago. I'll link to that episode above and in the description. I'm going to take the lid off. And I've covered this in so many videos, but <laughs> for the sake of completeness, the screws that we need to remove are those in the square holes. And there are seven of them. The missing one there is that mystery screw in my parts tray left over from the last video. Naughty me, didn't put them all back in. And if you're curious, that little white device down there is my mouster. That's a USB to Atari mouse adapter. And it's a really great bit of kit. So you can use any mouse just about with an ST. Also, if you take an ST apart, you don't want to remove these three screws in the round holes or the floppy disk will fall out, which could make it a little difficult. Flipping the ST over, let's get the case lid off. Now, I will say my ST has been heavily modified to my sort of satisfaction. So the inside of the ST you're seeing here may not match the inside of yours. But the most important thing is that the power supply in here is a stock ST power supply. So I'm going to disconnect the wiring from my GoTech. You will not have this. And that's the lid off. And what we're dealing with today is entirely under that. So I won't disconnect the keyboard completely. I'm just going to move it out of the way. Let's have a look. I didn't know if this was going to cause a problem. This is my four meg RAM upgrade and the ribbon cable might get in our way, but we'll see how that goes. But this machine has had a lot of stuff done through. So I had a recap in 2020. I put the GoTech in last year in 2024 and I updated it to TOS 104 in 2023. And now it's 2025. And it, so it's had an upgrade basically every year since 2022. It's a lucky little device it is. It's had so much love given to it. So here we have my ancient old pliers, which are like 40 year old. I'm going to use them to straighten out these tabs that hold the PSU cover in place. You just twist them to the straight and lift the cover off. And of course, I always forget that there's also a screw holding this on. So once that's gone, we're good to go. Now, one thing I really, really hate about the original PSU is that one of these two heat sinks in here is live at mains voltage when the original CPU is plugged in and working. And that's very dangerous if you're poking around inside a computer with an uninsulated screwdriver like this one. We're not in any trouble because I discharged the capacitors. Now for this power supply on the main side, black is live and white is neutral. And these are routed from the main socket through the switch and onto the PSU mainboard. Now there's heat shrink tubing on the switch side that I'm going to have to cut open for continuity testing. But I'm just pointing out that I want to minimize the amount I cut open because that's obviously there for a reason and I don't want to disturb it. What I'm going to do is cut the live and the neutral after the switch as close to the board as I can. This is the connector that's going to join the old mains wiring to the new PSU. Now it appears to have plenty of length, so it should be easy to attach, but we might need to find somewhere to stuff the excess when we reassemble the ST. So having measured twice, let's cut once. Now that the board's disconnected from the mains input, we remove the four screws holding the PSU in place. And man, these screws are in for keeps. So quite a bit of force is needed to get them out. I'll zip forward to the end of this bit. Removing the PSU connection to the ST main board here gives us a handy little mechanism for extricating the power supply. Here we have it. So I am not going to e-waste this board. It's still functional and may come in handy in the future. You never know when you're going to need a working power supply. But the new one is going to go in this way, slip underneath the power socket and the switch cabling. I'm going to remove a couple of cable ties to give us a little bit more wiggle room. Now we need to strip a bit of insulation off the live and neutral. And after that, the PSU needs attaching to the board. Now I'm going to tighten these a little bit more than finger tight as the original were, I say, very strongly tightened. Next, we need to attach this connector block to the mains cable. Now I said earlier, there's a trick that this connector has is that it pulls into two separate parts. If I'd realized that now, this process would have gone a lot more smoothly. So screwing the wire in the in, into the terminal block is very easy to do. 
but also it's easy to mess up because it's easily possible to put the wire in too far to screw the terminal block onto the insulation rather than onto the wire. So I'm going to test for continuity. I'll test from here to here. And we get a beep, so that's good. And if we go to there and test to that screw there, we get nothing. So there you go. That's why we test these things, right? It's a quick fix. We'll just loosen it, uh, just hit the bit and retighten it. And lots of beeps say this is now a good connection. Okay, this end goes into the mean weld power supply on the hot end. And next we need to connect the mains from the switch to the other end of the connector block. And here, white goes to yellow and black goes to black. So again, as a reminder, black is live, white stroke yellow is neutral. And let's check that for continuity. And all is good. So next we go black to black. Test that. And we're happy. Now we need to get the PSU connected to the main board. Uh, that connects in here on the left-hand side of the power supply. And, ac and accessing the connector on the main board is made slightly more complicated by this ribbon cable for my 4 meg upgrade. Again, you won't have that. It's time to reassemble our ST and test away. Now, I'm not going to show this as reassembling is really just the reverse of disassembling. But I'm not going to screw the case together until I know it's working. Okay, I've connected my ST to power and to a monitor. Let's do the bravery test. And it doesn't work. Yeah, but that's why I didn't screw the case up before I tested it. So the next morning I set to fixing this, and after opening up the ST, notice how the live wire has fallen out of the connector block. In fact, when I looked at the whole footage of the build, you can see it falling out. I did say I'd show you the process warts and all. I'm going to say, these things do happen, and this is the first time I've done it. When I put another one of these into my STE, it'll go much more smoothly. As I mentioned earlier, I was doing the dumb version of the build, as this connector separated the two pieces to make the process easier. There you go. Perhaps I should have read the instructions. Now, I'm tempted to get this involved and make the connection stronger, but this is meant to be a solderless kit, and I want to give it a fair crack at the whipper because it really does feel secure now. So let's reassemble again and test it. So power in, monitor in, let's turn her on. And what we're looking for is a power light here, which we have. The GoTech is on and the screen has lit up with a GoTech interface. So I'm as happy as Larry. So I did promise I'd wear the old power supply for comparison and zeroing out the scales, the weight comes to 213 grams. So my newly refurbished ST is 17 grams lighter. Bet you're better off for knowing that, aren't you? Thought so. So what are my thoughts on this? So the kit is really well constructed. It contains everything you need to do a solderless upgrade of an ST, STE, or Mega ST power supply. It's easy to construct. And admittedly, it will be a lot easier to construct if you're not trying to film it over your baldy head. And the issue I came across with the detached wire was due to me not realizing until later that the connector separated into two parts. So I was basically putting strain on wires that I shouldn't have. Finally, at tickle under 55 euros, it's really good value for money. And there are a couple of other projects on the side cartridge website that I'm keen to have a go at. And in particular, the side cartridge toss emulator, which allows you to swap toss ROMs on a physical machine without opening the device and swapping chips. That's just amazing. Anyway, that's all for now. Thanks for watching, and I will talk to you soon.